Hey there. Yes, yes, I know there was no video on Friday, I can explain. So, as I have mentioned before, I faint sometimes, and I did a lot when I was a kid, and I probably still do now. You know, I faint in a manly way. How do you faint in a manly way? I'm sure Sylvester Stallone would know how to faint in a manly way. Urgh. I didn't want to hit my head. But I wanted to talk to you about one instance of me fainting in general, which I think is that beautifully stupid that it needs to be publicised on the internet for about ten people to actually watch. Bunch. I was at school and it was around year three or four if I can remember right and we were in assembly. Now back when I was a kid, assemblies were just littered with Christianity. Seriously, looking back I feel like it was a really tame version of the Westboro Baptist Church. Except instead of picket fences of horrible propaganda, we sang lots of happy songs about God and religion. He's got a whole wide world in his head. Oh, you remember that song. And obviously the assemblies were religious but they had a weird moral and we had this one where it was about a girl who was deaf and blind and it was really sad because she obviously couldn't do anything so she just yelled and it, it was very sad and I can't for the life of me remember the moral. There was a moral to the story but after the events of what happened I just remember that that was the topic and the teachers decided to put us through 20 minutes of describing her ordeal. <laughs> and because I was obviously a squeamish child, I had that sort of thing where I went, oh, so this is what they're describing to us. Let's have imagery. I had a very overactive imagination as a child, and I probably still do now, which is probably why I will still faint, because I sort of see what could be going on, and it's always worst case scenario in my head. It's like, Oh, that's the worst case scenario of the pain that she's going through, of the horrible things that could be going on with her. Ah. It's like that scene in Looper. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Luke. When the guy has his fingers chopped off as he gets older, I was like... <laughs> I actually have to walk out of a room sometimes and just catch my breath and go... <sighs> in a manly way. So then the assembly was over. By this point, all I could see was yellow. When I go faint, or I'm about to go faint, I just see yellow, which is a weird colour for me to see. It's a weird colour for anyone to just see. It's just yellow. It's just sort of pukey yellow, and I'm sort of like, yeah. So this is the important thing I want you to realise about this assembly, is that we were about 300 kids. I was blind. If I tripped over, immense ridicule for the rest of my school time there, and that would have been horrible. So, obviously, I didn't tell my friend next to me that, you know, I couldn't see. So, I made the brilliant judgement of just getting up. Luckily, I could see sort of blurs of people, so I could follow my class's line behind me. I got up, okay, okay, I can only see yellow, there's a blur, I'll follow that blur. Ended up sort of remembering where the route was out of the hall. And the thing is, I knew that if I could get outside and just step to the side and breathe, I'd be perfectly fine. Just before getting outside, though, there were two big wooden doors. Oh, uh, we see where this is going, don't we? I was following my friend's blur. At least I thought I was. I must have really terrible peripheral vision. Yes, I got that right. Because I was sort of 30 centimetres to the side of the blur that was my friend. Unfortunately only one of the wooden doors was open, the other was latched shut. Guess whose forehead hit the side of the wood? Oh. It was supposed to say that knock on the head completely rid me of all that fainting stuff and luckily it was only my classmates behind me that could see and it was... I don't remember anyone talking about it so I don't think it really affected me in school. I don't know. I spent a lot of time in the library, or in classroom. But hopefully from tragic stories come some kind of humorous stories, and if it is still a pitiful story that I told, not funny, then liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to pity me would be great. If you pity me, just do all of that.
Imagine a video just based on pitying me. It would get so many views just because of the pity. Ha! <laughs> I'm such an ugly crier. Push me. I must have terrible peripheral. I must have really terrible peripheral vision. Peri if you pity me, I would greatly appreciate more pity in the. <laughs>